Space, the final frontier. This module will boldly go where no art class has gone before. The term space refers to everything around us that is seemingly empty. We usually associate space with atmosphere or with a sort of breathing room. The visual arts are sometimes referred to as the spatial arts. This is because much of the visual arts are arranged within physical space. Everything from sculpture and architecture to drawings, paintings, and photographs exist within actual three-dimensional space. To accurately experience a three-dimensional space, we need to see it for ourselves. For this reason, architects are one group of artists who very much take interest in the effects of space on our perception. Whether a room is built with 50-foot ceilings or with 4-foot ceilings can dramatically change the perception of that space. When an artist utilizes physical space to present their work, it's referred to as an installation. If you have ever uh, needed to install new countertops in your kitchen or bathroom, for example, you know that it makes more sense to install them at waist level than at ceiling level. With art, installation can be as simple as how a painting is hung on a wall. Where the work is positioned can drastically change how we see it. Installation can also be as complex as how an artist utilizes the entire space of a gallery to influence the viewer's perception. This Puerto Rican artist, Pepon Osorio, creates elaborate installations that take the whole space of the gallery into account. This piece, entitled Badge of Honor, is comprised of two adjacent rooms, those of a real-life father and his son. The installation on the left is a recreation of the father's room, who has been incarcerated for a crime he committed. This room is very sparse as it represents his isolation and his lack of personal freedoms. It exists within actual three-dimensional space. To accurately experience a three-dimensional space, we need to see it for ourselves. For this reason, architects are one group of artists who very much take interest in the effect of space on our perception. Whether a room is built with 50, both rooms also display the projected images of their described inhabitants. For this part, the artist plays a multi-session conversation that he recorded between the two subjects. By doing this, the father and son are able to ask each other questions that may have been difficult to ask behind prison walls. Although actual space only exists in the third dimension, there are various means by which an artist can create an illusion of space on a two-dimensional surface. The principle of overlap is one such way to create the illusion of space on a 2D surface. When we see one object or shape placed in front of another, we read the overlapping form as being closer in space than the recessive form. Diminishing size, is another principle that artists may use to create an illusion of spatial depth. When one form is larger than another, we read the larger of the two as being closer in space. Yet another cue to spatial depth is the principle of vertical placement. We tend to read forms that are near the bottom of a picture plane as being closer in space than forms near the top of a picture plane. This final diagram illustrates how all three principles overlap, diminishing size, and vertical placement can be utilized in the same image. Another way that the illusion of space can be represented in the 2D is through the convention of perspective. The most commonly associated type of perspective, called linear perspective, is a mathematically derived system that was invented in Italy during the 15th century. Linear perspective allows us to depict the way that objects in space appear to a viewer at a specific viewpoint. With this type of perspective, objects in the distance appear to be smaller than those closer to you, and parallel lines appear to converge as they recede into the distance. We know that parallel lines, such as the lines of a road, never actually converge, but due to the curvature of the Earth, we perceive this illusion. When parallel lines appear to converge, we call that point of convergence the vanishing point. For this illusion to work properly, the vanishing point must be positioned on the horizon line. 
and the horizon line is often synonymous with the horizon of the Earth, and it's always meant to imply the eye level of the viewer. If an image using linear perspective were to be hung substantially too high or substantially too low, the illusion of perspective would be not complete for the viewer. The vantage point for this type of perspective begins at the eye level of the artist and it then translates to the eye level of the viewer. This particular type of linear perspective that we've been discussing is called one-point perspective. It is called one point because there is only one vanishing point on the horizon line. This is an example of two-point perspective. With two-point perspective, there are two sets of vanishing points rather than a single point. Some artists even use three-point perspective. Essentially, the more vanishing points that there are in an image, the more points of perspective are being used. Atmospheric perspective, also known as aerial perspective, is less rigid and mathematical than linear perspective. With atmospheric perspective, an artist shifts value, color intensity, and detail to create the illusion of space. This type of perspective is most commonly used in the landscape painting genre. As forms recede in space, we become less and less capable of distinguishing their detail. This is due in part to the density of the atmosphere itself. The further we have to look through space to see a form, the more atmosphere we physically have to look through. Hence the name atmospheric perspective. One final type of perspective is called isometric perspective. Isometric perspective is found less in fine arts than in assembly diagrams. With this type of perspective, parallel lines do not appear to converge as they recede. Isometric perspective is used most commonly by engineers to emphasize the geometry of an object rather than emphasize the illusion of spatial depth. This type of perspective helps people who wonder why the bricks for their new fireplace are rectangles instead of trapezoids.